In this video tutorial, we will guide you how to install Apache CloudStack for the first time. Although CloudStack is known for its ease of installation and use, it's not always easy first time. This video will show you how to do a simple installation the right way, fast and easy. First, let's learn the key terminology used in Apache CloudStack. Following this, we will guide you through the specific requirements regarding this tutorial, subsequently leading you to the detailed installation steps. Finally, we'll quickly demonstrate how to operate CloudStack when it's up and running. CloudStack has a hierarchy of organizational units. At the highest level is the region that represents the largest organizational unit that can encompass one or more zones. Zones are often mapped to data centers by CloudStack operators. Zones are subdivided into smaller units known as pods, which often equate to a rack in a data center. Each pod contains a collection of clusters, which are the next level down in the hierarchy. Within each cluster, we find individual hosts, which are the fundamental building blocks of the cloud infrastructure. In Apache CloudStack, there are two distinct types of storage. Primary storage is used for the instance volumes and can be associated with a cluster or a zone depending the hypervisor support. Secondary storage, which can be of a lower grade or more cost-effective, is utilized for storing templates, ISO images, and volume snapshots within each zone. For this tutorial, we are adhering to the minimum requirements as referred by the official Apache CloudStack documentation. These requirements encompass the specifications for the management server and KVM hosts. The designated machine for the management server must fulfill the following criteria. Rocky Linux 8 as the operating system with a minimum of two CPU cores, eight gigabytes of memory, 500 gigabytes of local disk space, at least one network card and a statically allocated IP address are required. Additionally, the management server needs to have a fully qualified domain name, which can be verified through the hostname command. For the KVM hosts, we recommend the following specifications. Rocky Linux 8, equipped with a minimum of eight CPU cores that support hardware virtualization, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and 150 gigabytes of local disk space. A KVM host requires at least two network cards and a statistically allocated IP address, along with a fully qualified domain name that can be verified using the hostname command. Additionally, consider setting up the native VLAN on the switch for host IP address access, as the KVM host network card will be utilized for establishing connections with the guest and public network VLANs. For the networking setup, consider using either a dedicated switch or a shared one ensuring sufficient ports to connect the management server and the KVM host, with a minimum availability of 1 gigabit per second ports. Additionally, allocate 10 dedicated VLANs to facilitate the guest networks. For the public network, allocate at least 10 IP addresses as per RFC 791 or 1918, depending on whether you intend to provide public or internal access to the cloud resources. Additionally, configure one Layer 3 VLAN that is routable to either the internet or the office network. These resources will be utilized for source NAT and instances services. For the CloudStack management network, reserve 10 IP addresses in accordance with RFC 1918. These will be utilized by CloudStack to manage the CloudStack system VMs and to handle the storage traffic. With all requirements in place, the proposed design for this tutorial encompasses a top-of-rack switch, a single management server host to act as the CloudStack management server, the MySQL database, and an NFS server. This is a very simple configuration of CloudStack. For the KVM hosts, you can scale the setup as needed, replicating the steps outlined in this tutorial for each additional unit, thereby ensuring a flexible and adaptable infrastructure that can evolve with your demands. The CloudStack installation process consists of the following steps. Management server pre-configuration, CloudStack installation, hypervisor setup. With the hardware requirements in place and a foundational understanding of the essential terminology of CloudStack, let's get started. Ensure that DNS entries are established for both the management server and the KVM hosts in the internal DNS server. Additionally, incorporate the public IP addresses for the public network to facilitate name resolution. For the NFS storage, configure it with the default settings, exporting the contents of the slash export directory. 
This directory should contain two additional subdirectories, primary and secondary, which will be utilized during the zone creation process. For further tuning and optimization, please refer to the official CloudStack documentation. Ensure that the IP address for the management server is statically configured. Additionally, set the SE Linux to permissive mode and ensure that the NTP client is configured properly. Finally, configure the MySQL database in accordance with the official CloudStock documentation. Connect via SSH to the CloudStack management host. Make sure you have already installed the EPL release package before proceed. Then, create the CloudStack repository file and install CloudStack management. After it's installed, run the CloudStack setup databases command. It will set up the MySQL and populate the cloud schema to your database. In this tutorial setup, we have designated cloud as the database user and password as the corresponding password. The deploy as argument is only required when setting up the first management server. At this point, if you've set root user credentials, you'll need to enter them ensuring they match the password you determined during the MySQL configuration process. Now run the CloudStack Setup Management command. As you can see, it has configured the required IP tables rules to allow the necessary ports. Next, enable and start the CloudStack Management Service. Finally, let's take a quick look at the CloudStack logs to ensure that the service is starting and everything looks good. Now we'll set up the hypervisor. CloudStack supports a wide range of hypervisors, but for this tutorial, we'll be using KVM. Connect to your KVM host, and then set the SE Linux to permissive mode and ensure that the NTP client is configured properly. Also, install the Network Scripts package instead of the standard Network Manager service. For the scope of this tutorial, we're using the Linux Bridge system instead of Open vSwitch with KVM. It is crucial to adjust from Network Interface Scripts. Make sure it is properly connected to the bridges CloudBR0 and CloudBR1. After these adjustments, restart the network service. Install the Apple repository package to get some of the dependencies that are not natively available. Then set up the CloudStack repository by creating a new file as follows. Next, proceed to install the CloudStack agent and the virtualization package group along with any other necessary dependencies. This step ensures that all essential components are successfully installed. With all packages installed, disable Listen on TLS and enable Listen on TCP from the libvirt daemon. After that, stop and mask the services that are not needed and restart the libvirt daemon. Also, enable and start the libvirt-d and CloudStack agent services. Replicate these steps for each KVM host you wish to include in your CloudStack infrastructure. Now with all components set up correctly, open a browser and input the management server IP address followed by colon 8080 slash client in the address bar. Once the user interface loads, use admin as the username and password as the default password to log in. Navigate to the infrastructure section, select zones, and then click on add zone. The zone creation wizard will appear. Choose core and click next. Select the Advanced Zone option and click Next. Enter the desired zone name. Specify your preferred external DNS server, internal DNS server, and choose KVM as the hypervisor. Then click Next. At this stage, the physical network interfaces will be displayed. Create a second physical network interface naming it to Physic Network 2. Remove the public and guest traffic types from Physical Network 1 and add them to Physical Network 2. In Physical Network 1, click Edit for the management traffic type and specify the bridge name we previously set to CloudBR0, then click OK. Now in Physical Network 2, click Edit for both guest and public traffic types and specify the bridge name we previously set to CloudBR1, then click OK. After configuring all the traffic labels, click Next. On this screen, configure the public traffic settings. Enter the necessary details for your public IP setup, click Add, and then Next. 
Each pod contains a collection of clusters, which are the next level down in the hierarchy. Configure the pod traffic settings by entering the relevant management IP information in the fields provided, then click Next. For the guest traffic, specify the chosen VLAN ID range and click Next. Enter the cluster name and click Next. Now we'll add the first KVM host. Provide the host details in the fields and click Next. This step focuses on setting up primary storage. Since we're using the management server as NFS storage, input the necessary primary storage details and click Next. For secondary storage, using the management server IP address, choose NFS as the provider first. Then enter the relevant secondary storage details and click Next. Your zone is now set up and ready to launch. Click on Launch Zone to proceed. Once all resources are successfully generated, click Enable Zone. Check the progress as console proxy VMs and secondary storage VM are being set up. When the system VMs are operational and the agent state indicates up, your CloudStack cloud setup is complete and ready for use. Now that you have successfully completed your CloudStack installation and created a zone, you can begin managing your cloud through CloudStack's user portal or API. Let's now have a quick look at a few operations within your new CloudStack environment. We will demonstrate some simple yet essential day-to-day -day operations, showcasing the orchestration capabilities of a CloudStack cloud infrastructure from the perspective of a regular user. This will allow us to explore the dynamic functionalities that CloudStack offers. Creating new templates for your instances. Adding and managing virtual networks. Managing egress rules to regulate your instances' internet traffic. Creating and managing instances. Setting up port forwarding or load balancing for your applications. Managing firewall rules. And much more. Thank you for tuning in to this tutorial. We trust it has equipped you with the knowledge to build your Apache CloudStack cloud successfully. Remember to explore all the links provided for detailed information and documentation available in the video description. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Don't forget to join us on the Apache CloudStack community user list.